Xbox is getting a new piece of hardware in 2022. What could it be? These new Xbox controllers are equally horrifying and intriguing. Cyberpunk is getting a new patch. And if you're a fan of comics, your Game Pass Ultimate subscription just got way more valuable. Let's discuss. So if you're watching this channel, chances are you are a fan of Game Pass. I did not fully jump on the Game Pass train until I picked up my Series X back in August. And ever since then, I can't imagine my life without Game Pass. I have Game Pass Ultimate, which is the $15 a month option. And since I picked it up in August, it has more than paid for itself playing the day one editions that come to the service. I've played Psychonauts 2, Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite, amongst many, 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 many others that's more than paid for my subscription. And as a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, I have access to a couple of more things versus the standard subscription. All the EA games are available through EA Play, It Takes Two, Jedi Fallen Order, the Battlefront games. And it also comes with some perks to to kind of sweeten the deal. I have Crunchyroll Premium thanks to my Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which is a lot more valuable now that Crunchyroll and Funimation have combined their libraries. You can get four months of Spotify Premium, Discord Nitro for a couple months. You can get two months of Hulu with no ads. And for all my comic book lovers out there, I'm sure there is a pretty good crossover of people who love comic books and people who love video games. You can now get a three month trial of Marvel Unlimited. Marvel Unlimited is a subscription service that gives you access to over 29,000 Marvel comics. That's a lot of comics that you can read through over the span of your three month trial. They even have this feature where you can tick, oh, I'm really into Spider-Man, so show me more Spider-Man comics. I'm really into Iron Man or Miss Marvel. Let me show Show me more stuff pertaining to those characters. You can kind of customize your experience to what you're interested in specifically. This is definitely something I'm going to opt into. I recently got back into reading comics. I read comics as a kid, but I didn't really get too, too deep into it. There's this really awesome shop in Burbank called The Perking Nerd, and I picked up a stack of Nightwing comics that I've been making my way through. And I know there's this whole debate of like, oh, digital versus physical stuff. Regardless, this is a great deal if you really are into comics or you want to get into it. The advertisement for this is kind of pushing it alongside of uh, Marvel's Avengers, which is on Game Pass right now. So it's kind of them saying, hey, you like this game, you like the Avengers, why don't you check out the source material by reading all these comics through Marvel Unlimited? And at the end of the day, it is just a really solid deal. Marvel Unlimited, the free trial that they usually offer, is just seven days before they start to charge you $10 a month. So three months of the service, if you were to buy that outside of your Game Pass subscription perks, then that would total up to $30. You're saving $30 and you get to read all these awesome comics. I think this is a solid deal. And this just solidifies why Game Pass is so wonderful. It's more than just games, it's a lifestyle man. Make sure you go on down to the merch shelf in the description or go to stayxboxready.com for your very own Maiden List t-shirt. If you use the code STAYREADY, you get 10% off your purchase. Now, if you haven't been paying attention, Cyberpunk 2077 is in the midst of a little bit of a comeback. We all know the story, right? CD Projekt Red dropped Cyberpunk 2077 back in 2020 and it was full of bugs. Everyone was hating on it. Everyone was memeing on it. It wasn't playable on the last gen consoles. They blocked reviewers from reviewing certain copies of the game, seeing certain copies of the game before they released. It was a mess. Fast forward two years and I gotta say, Cyberpunk is some a game that I enjoy, I, which is not something that I thought I would be saying, considering all the hate that it got when it launched. Back in February, they launched patch 1.5, which included a next-gen version of the game. This was a free update for anyone who had already owned a copy of Cyberpunk 2077, and it came with all the standard next-gen visual updates, and it fixed a lot of those bugs that were plaguing it when it first came out. It has the quality mode or fidelity mode, whatever you want to call it, that prioritizes resolution over frame rate and the performance mode that prioritizes 60 frames per second at the expense of the resolution. They even threw out a free trial for anyone that was curious, anyone who wanted to jump into Cyberpunk before they committed to buying it. Very classy move, very classy. 
I checked it out on stream myself, and I gotta say, I was pretty impressed. I was digging the game. I haven't gotten back to it since I've been so uh, immersed in Elden Ring, but I will definitely jump back in once I beat Elden Ring. But just because they released patch 1.5, the next gen version of the game, does not mean that CD Projekt Red is done. That is right. They have released patch 1.52, and while it's not nearly as dramatic of a change as patch 1.5, there are some really awesome things that they're doing, and it's a good sign that they're continuing to optimize the experience and add content to the game. If you go on over to the Cyberpunk website, they have a full breakdown of the patch notes. I'm just gonna go over the first couple. As far as gameplay goes, they fixed an issue that would cause wrecked cars or multiple nomad cars to spawn in traffic when driving fast. Fixed an issue where first equip animation could be played repeatedly after recovering a throwing knife. The laminate armor media ballistic vest can now be found as loot in Japantown, so new gear. Fixed an issue where the recon grenade highlighted non-hostile crowd NPCs, fixed an issue where after using the take control quick hack on a device, camera access were inverted when zoomed in. Beyond that, they ended up tweaking some quests, some things about the open world and the crowds, the UI, and some visual bugs as well. As far as console-specific issues, there aren't that many uh, issues that were fixed specifically for Xbox Series consoles versus the PlayStation 5, but they did fix this bizarre thing that was happening where you would get stuck if your controller disconnected while also you were in the pause menu. So they, did a, they went ahead and fixed that. Very specific, but obviously very annoying. You don't want your character to be stuck. You don't want to be stuck in a pause screen. Overall, like I said, this is very encouraging that CD Projekt Red is continuing to optimize the experience to add content. I don't think they will ever be able to fully get over how they handled the launch of this game, but it is encouraging to see this. They're working on Cyberpunk, and they also just announced that they're working on The Witcher 4, which is awesome. So CD Projekt Red, it's on the upswing, I would say. Whether or not people are going to fully forgive them, for launching Cyberpunk like they did, I'm not sure, but I feel like they're doing some pretty good work. So over the past six months or so, Microsoft has put out some pretty interesting, pretty cool special edition Xbox Series consoles. We had a SpongeBob <laughs> Series X, we had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Xbox, the Halo Infinite Special Edition one, of course, and we had a Shang-Chi one, a Garfield one. I'm pretty sure there was a Whataburger one floating around for anyone who's watching this from Texas or the South who knows what a burger is. Now Xbox is putting out another special edition console, this time a Series S, and I gotta say, it's very interesting. It's definitely raising some eyebrows on Twitter. This bundle is themed after Sonic 2, the upcoming movie, and Sonic, this as a franchise uh, in terms of the movies, is probably best known for the one time that Twitter bullying worked out for the better. When Sonic, the trailer for the first movie, we ever, when everyone saw that, people were like, what the heck is going on? Why does Sonic look like that? He's disgusting. What is that? <laughs> and eventually this led the people who were working on the movie, the animators, to update the design to a much more aesthetically pleasing version of Sonic. And I gotta say, the first Sonic movie, it was pretty good as far as video game adaptations go. I feel like it was pretty solid. Now they got Sonic 2 coming out, and this time they got Knuckles. Idris Elba as Knuckles. I never thought I would be saying that in my lifetime, using those words in a sentence together, but here we are. This Series S has a black foundation and has Sonic and Knuckles facing off as they appear in the movie. And they have a really cool nod to the video games because the ring around the fan on the front of the Series S is modeled after the golden rings that you would see in the video games. Now, the Series S itself, the console itself, that's pretty cool, right? But they had to go in and throw in these crazy controllers with it. But it's not just any blue and red controller. These controllers are completely covered in fur. And whoever did this, may God have mercy on your soul because these, just looking at it, just look all sorts of wrong, man. I've been gaming for a while and I just can't imagine anyone who would want to have a furry controller. <laughs> And it's not like these things have like a little bit of fuzz on that. No, they're like full shag rug furry. Like these things are hairy, man. <laughs> it would be a nightmare to maintain. If I leave a controller on my desk for more than a couple days, it collects all sorts of dust. 
like, check out my Aizawa Funko Pop. He's already collecting a little bit of dust and he's only been on here for like a couple days. I can't imagine the nasty things this controller would collect if you were just stuff it in a drawer or something like that. On top of that, if your palms get really sweaty in particularly stressful games like Elden Ring or a shooter, Call of Duty, Halo Infinite, something like that, can you imagine how nasty these things would get? I gotta say, they do look a little weird, but I'm intrigued. I wanna like hold one. I wanna check it out for myself. I would probably, like I said, never use it for my go-to gaming controller, but I wanna see what it's about. I wanna hold one physically in my hands. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can get my hands on one, talk about on the channel, but it looks like they're only giving one or two of these away. So the chances of that are very slim. Whether or not you like the controllers, I think the Series S itself, it looks pretty clean, it looks pretty cool. If you wanna enter for your chance to win this special edition Series S along with the furry controller bundle, go on over to Twitter, go to the Xbox account, the official account, and they have a tweet talking about the sweepstakes, talking about this giveaway. Retweet that with the hashtag XboxSonic2Sweepstakes for your chance to win. Do it by April 4th and do not unfollow them during that time. If you follow them, retweet tweet it, hashtag it, and then they go to potentially pick a winner and they see that you have unfollowed them, they won't give it to you. So over on the Xbox Era podcast, Nick Baker, aka Special Nick, aka an elite Xbox insider, he mentioned a pretty interesting bit of news. He claimed that Xbox was going to release a new bit of hardware sometime in 2022. He said, I'm saying it should be this year. Xbox currently has some hardware to show, that they're going to show, that falls into a different bucket than people are probably expecting. Hmm, very interesting. What could it be? What do people want it to be? Now, when these guys, Special Nick, uh, Jez Corden, Randall Thor, sometimes they'll say one thing and be like, ah, oh, it's kind of like a throwaway thing. They don't really know too much about it. Uh, and then people will write up whole articles or run with it being like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I'm definitely guilty of that happening sometimes. But I do think it's definitely plausible that they're going to put out some sort of hardware in the span. It's not going to be a new console. It's not going to be like an Xbox Series X double pro wide, whatever. Despite all this talk about Project Keystone, Product Keystone, whatever you want to call it. But I do think it is reasonable that they will put out something hardware related in 2022. Now, what throws me off about this quote in particular is when he mentioned that it falls into a different bucket than people are probably expecting. That's pretty mysterious. Now, what could it be? Maybe a new controller. I love the X box controller. I don't know if that's just uh, like I'm used to it now, but I love the feel of it ergonomically. It fits into my hand very well. I love the asymmetrical uh, analog sticks. I think that's super comfortable compared to my PlayStation controller, which has them on the same plane. But obviously it was kind of a bummer to see that the Xbox controller, it didn't really change between the two generations, right? This is an Xbox One controller. This is an Xbox Series X controller. And as you could see, they're pretty much the same. This one is slightly smaller. It has some grips on the back and on the triggers. And of course it has the share button. The share button has been a hotly debated topic. Not really, it's just people find that the share button is useless. They don't really use it as much. Microsoft saw this and said, okay, you don't use the share button, you can remap it to do all sorts of other stuff in this latest update. And while there is the argument of like, okay, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, looking over to other platforms, seeing that they have controllers that support motion controls, haptic feedback, adapter triggers, little speakers and microphones in the controller, it was kind of like, uh, kind of underwhelming when compared to that. Maybe this could be Microsoft's opportunity to do their own version of the DualSense controller, but for the Xbox. But going back to Special Nick's quote, it falls into a different bucket than people are expecting. And I feel like a lot of people are expecting a new controller. So that's too obvious. This is sort of blurring the line between hardware and software. But we know that Xbox has been working on having a cloud gaming stick that you plug into your TV and can stream games to. Maybe they even come out with an Xbox TV specifically for that purpose. We know they have been putting a lot of work into the cloud over the past 
past couple of months, they just released an update that improves performance on your iOS devices for cloud gaming. So overall, they're kind of on a roll with this cloud gaming stuff, but again, that is a little predictable. This, that's what's throwing me off about this quote, that it's like, oh, it's gonna be something that people don't expect. And uh, the cloud gaming stuff, that's a little bit predictable, I feel like. A lot of people are thinking that it could be an opportunity for Microsoft to unveil their own virtual reality headset. I don't know how likely that is. They have come out previously and said they weren't interested in virtual reality tech. And I feel personally, it, virtual reality, VR, just does not fit in the direction that Xbox is going with the cloud gaming, with the ecosystem that they have going on between PC and consoles, play wherever you want. I feel like VR is just not like, I don't know, it's just too much of a novelty. It's not the main way that people are playing their games right now. So why should Microsoft pour all that energy into developing the tech, developing a headset for it? And then by extension, you got to develop games for it. And that's a whole nother thing, right? I'm not saying VR isn't fun. There's definitely some circumstances where I've had a great time with a VR, playing super hot in VR, playing Beat Saber, I'm very excited for this game coming up called Quest Haven, which is like a virtual D&D tabletop map building thing. But overall, I just feel like it would be a waste of time, money, and energy for Microsoft to pursue a virtual reality type thing. Like, especially looking over at PlayStation VR, no one's really talking about it, right? No one is saying, like, this is a must-have accessory. First of all, it's expensive. Second of all, not a lot of games support virtual reality technology. Now, me, personally, I would like to see them roll out a Generation 3 version of the Kinect. I want the Kinect to make a comeback. Now, I know that may surprise people considering that Xbox abandoned the Kinect after that whole fiasco of bundling the Kinect in with Xbox One consoles, but we know that Microsoft hasn't abandoned the motion sensor technology completely, so I really feel like they can use that to make an awesome streamlined version of the Kinect. Like, think about it, with all these new games that Xbox has coming out, Starfield coming out in November, they can integrate the Kinect in a really cool way. They can do, they can bring back the whole thing where the Kinect scans your face and then puts it on your character in the game. They can bring back voice commands. Don't tie it to motion technology. Don't make it obnoxious like they did with that one Fable game that came out back in the day. But imagine you're going through Starfield and you say, hey robot, pick up that thing over there and your Kinect does the voice command for you and you're interacting with the world in that way. That would be really awesome. Last but not least, I feel like this could be a good opportunity for them to roll out a portable Xbox, some sort of portable mobile Xbox Game Pass machine, or maybe it's just like a little thing that is constantly connected to Xbox Cloud Gaming and that's how you play games. I don't know if people would really go for that. I feel like people are getting a little bit fatigued on devices that require online play all the time. But we know with products like the Backbone, like like the Razer Kishi, which I have right over there, people are interested in taking their Xbox games on the go. So this could be a good opportunity for them to say, hey, we finally got a handheld Xbox. We have a handheld Game Pass machine. Who knows? 